A day after Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu delivered a speech to Congress and President Biden gave a primetime address on exiting the 2024 race, the two are set to meet in D.C. And we break down what you need to know about the newest sport at the Olympic Games. The Morning Rundown starts now. From the Straight Arrow News Studio, bringing the stories that matter to you from across the United States and around the world. This is the Morning Rundown. Today is Thursday, July 25th. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. Happening today, President Biden will hold a high-stakes meeting with Benjamin Netanyahu one day after Israel's prime minister delivered a speech to Congress. Biden is expected to press Netanyahu in getting a hostage and ceasefire deal solidified. U.S. officials say it's a critical moment in negotiations over the deal, something Biden said will be a priority with the time he has left as president. Israeli negotiators were expected to travel to Qatar today, but Netanyahu ordered them not to travel yet, saying he wanted to wait until after he meets with Biden before Israel goes back to the negotiating table. After meeting with Biden, Netanyahu is expected to meet with Vice President and Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris before meeting with Republican presidential candidate former President Trump on Friday. In his address to Congress, Netanyahu thanked the U.S. for backing Israel's war against Hamas with weapons support. The vast majority of Americans have not fallen uh, for this Hamas propaganda. They continue to support Israel. And I want to say thank you, America. And thank you, senators and House members who continue to support us, continue to support Israel, continue to support the truth and see through the lies. But this speech was met with protest in and outside the Capitol building. Dozens of congressional Democrats boycotted the address. Representative Rashida Tlaib from Michigan held a sign reading war criminal while Netanyahu spoke. Thousands of protesters gathered near the Capitol, some burning an American flag and an effigy of Netanyahu. President Biden addressed the nation from the Oval Office Wednesday night for the first time since suspending his 2024 presidential campaign. Biden explained his decision to not seek a second term. He says it's time for new voices, and in this election, the idea of America lies in voters' hands. Nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. For the remaining six months of his term, Biden says he plans to focus on the job of the presidency, including plans to continue lowering costs for families. In his address, Biden reiterated his support for Vice President Kamala Harris to take his place at the top of the ticket. I made my choice. I made my views known. I'd like to thank our great Vice President Kamala Harris. She's experienced, she's tough, she's capable. She's been an incredible partner to me and a leader for our country. Harris is reportedly vetting around a dozen possible running mates, including governors, members of Congress, current cabinet secretaries, and some people who aren't presently in public office. That pick is expected to be made public sometime before August 7th. Alarming new information about the assassination attempt on former President Trump. FBI Director Christopher Wray testified before Congress on Wednesday, revealing the gunman did a Google search a week before opening fire, looking up the shooting distance in the killing of President John F. Kennedy. Thomas Crooks entered this chilling Google search. How far away was Oswald from Kennedy? The FBI director says these words are significant in terms of the shooter's state of mind. An FBI analysis of Crooks' laptop found he did the search on the same day he registered for Trump's rally. Ray also told lawmakers about a shocking security lapse in the sky, the gunman scoping out Trump's rally site with a drone, possibly even live streaming, just two hours before the former president took the stage. A CBS News analysis found Crooks fired eight bullets in less than six seconds before being shot and killed by a Secret Service sniper. 
More questions about the events leading up to Trump's near assassination are hoping to be answered by a newly aligned congressional task force. House lawmakers voted to create a task force to investigate the security lapses surrounding the assassination attempt. The legislation to okay their investigation passed by a vote of 416 to zero. The North American Aerospace Defense Command, better known as NORAD, says it intercepted two Russian and two Chinese bombers flying near Alaska on Wednesday. Officials say the bombers did not enter U.S. airspace, but got close enough that the U.S. and Canada sent fighter jets to intercept them. A U.S. defense official said this was the first time the two countries have been intercepted while operating together. But NORAD said the incident was, quote, not seen as a threat. Right. The NBA has decided where you'll be seeing its games next season after rejecting a $1.8 billion offer to keep airing games with Warner Brothers Discovery. The NBA says it signed an 11 year agreement with Disney, NBC and Amazon. The deal is reportedly worth an estimated $76 billion. But the agreement is likely to bring a legal showdown between the NBA and Warner Brothers Discovery. The media company says it believes the NBA can't reject its offer and says it will take appropriate action. Finally this morning, while the opening ceremony is still a day away, the Paris games got underway on Wednesday, and it wasn't the best start for the U.S. men's soccer team, which fell to France 3-0. Team USA will look to bounce back as the Olympics continue, including in the newest sport to join the games, breaking. Here's senior producer Brock Kohler to break it all down in today's edition of Racing Toward Paris. For the first time ever, breaking will be competed at the Summer Games. 16 B-Boys, 16 B-Girls, battling for supremacy in the only new sport at the Paris Olympics. Before we throw down any more facts, if you have any question about breaking or breakdancing being a sport, listen to USA Break-In's Ricardo Fernandez Jr., the man credited with creating the blueprint for competitive breaking competitions, who can tell you all about its rich history dating back to the 1970s. We were breaking to the break of the record. So now you see where the name comes from. You see what I'm saying? You're, so the record has a break, and that break is the percussion drum part that was elongated by the DJ. He says breaking comes down to discipline, hence the Bruce Lee background, and athleticism. You take the athleticism and you put two individuals or a group to compete against each other constantly you are already creating the atmosphere for it to become marketable. Breaking, you have to be athletic to achieve what you see now. Team USA will be represented by four athletes called breakers. There's Jeffrey Lewis, known as B-Boy Jeffro, who just a few years back wrote a letter to the International Olympic Committee to get breaking to be part of the games. There's Logan Edra, who started breaking at age seven, nicknamed Logistics by her father. Sonny Choi, who picked up the sport while a freshman at the University of Pennsylvania. And Victor Montavo, the first American to qualify, whose father and uncle were breaking pioneers. Fernandez, known in the breaking world as B-Boy Speedy Legs, has seen the sport evolve from his days of teaching it to kids in 1980s Miami to showing off his power moves in New York in the 90s. I dedicated my life to breaking in every aspect in the art form, in the athleticism, in the competitiveness, and also help create the platform that would take it to the Olympics. Fernandez started the B-Boys Masters Pro-Am, one of the first breaking competitions, trying to grow the sport and everything that comes with it. The moves like Top Rock, the music from the DJ, and the overall hip hop culture that inspires the art form. I put together the first elements of how to judge it because it was really hard to judge break. Like when I talked to some of the guys that I was down with in the beginning, I know that they probably thought I was corny <laughs> about implementing something like that. Fernandez created a five element judging system. One he says is very similar to how the breakers will be judged at the Olympics, which will be musicality, vocabulary, originality, technique, 
and execution. Though Fernandez says some heated politics between organizations emerged during Breaking's path to the Olympics, he knows his sport's place on the world's biggest stage will help it grow even more. I believe that when it gets its exposure uh, in the next two to three weeks, it's going to be phenomenal. I truly believe it's going to open more opportunities, not only for the first four athletes from the United States to make history by being on stage, but for also to create new outlets for the youth. These are your top stories for this Thursday. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.